Backward, joined here by Eric July of Backwards and being a libertarian and myself, Paul Gordon. I don't, I've, I'm with a lot of things. But if you want to know anything, just go to istv.me. All my stuff is there. So I want to ask you a question first, Eric, before we begin. Uh, I, right, I, right. I, I, I want to see, like, the degree to which you and I are on the same page as, so, as far as what I call my framework of, of preference. So the mm -hmm. first, first, first question I have to ask you is, do you prefer that human beings live? Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that's 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 You're automatic. Pro, uh, not necessarily. <laughs> not you pro will... life. Like, don't don't use that term. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's no. Gonna get us in trouble. <laughs> no, uh, and no, people no. gonna be in the comments thinking for... that we're, we're all they're talking about abortion and. Uh, no, not, not today. Not today. Yeah, that's not not, not, not today. So so yeah. you, you're pro humans living. Yeah, right? absolutely. That, that's a good starting point. If you absolutely. if you said no to that, this probably yeah. would have went a dark, dark turn. Dark, very yeah. dark turn. So the second thing is, do you prefer, and I understand I'm going to use a subjective term here, but however you understand this word, mm -hmm. do you prefer that humans prosper? Yes, absolutely. Yes, I, mean, I, I think that's a, it's an easy term uh, to go, to go off of. Absolutely. Uh, when you talk about why it is that I advocate what I advocate for, um, in terms of uh, definitely, you know, when I always talk about private, people think I'm joking and shit when I always talk about privatization of, of pretty much everything moving, um, and not moving, but, uh, it's the re the reason behind it is because I do want human beings to prosper. And I do feel as if, uh, their ability to be able to, uh, uh, prosper is more, I guess, suited for a, a society in which everybody is free. So the that, fact that, that I actually gets to prosper, my third one, right. And the third one, which I'm pretty sure I already knew, kind of knew in advance that yeah, you were going absolutely. to with these, but I just want to set a for the listeners. To. Right. Yeah. So, the, so the third thing is, do you prefer that human beings have the greatest opportunity to make their own choices with as little, I'll say, as little physical coercion as possible? Absolutely. 100%. So, so, 100%. So you and I, we 100%. agree with these three frameworks. Mm-hmm. And I think that you and I agree that the the path that we've been under for thousands of years, the the coercive enterprise path, the state path, whatever you want to call it, not 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 helping you and I get to our goal. No, I mean they prevent it. <laughs> they yeah, literally yeah, that, prevent yeah, it. They yeah. prevent it. So I, I so everything for me, everything that I'm going to talk about with you or I'm gonna ask you and try to understand. And, mm -hmm. and above all else, I want to understand your perspective. Absolutely. And, uh, and hopefully, I hope you understand my perspective as well. So, mm -hmm. so the first part I want to get to with this is, do you believe that the conversation that we're having within the anarchist community, the debate that you see ongoing between open borders and closed borders, do you believe mm -hmm. that the amount of energy that's being put into that is it too much energy too little energy mm -hmm. or are we at goldilocks well i think that and that's a great question by the way i don't think people should and again i don't want to dictate what it is somebody's types of i guess activism should or should not be now i will t talk about my uh particular preference and that definitely amongst other people that are already thinking like me it's not the most, I wouldn't put all my energy, absolutely, in, in, in having a conversation about that. Because if you're already an anarchist or you're already a libertarian, then we're on the same side already. So trying to convince each other is not really a, or, or spending a lot of time trying to convince each other for an end game that we already believe in is not the best use of our scarce resources as there are the majority of people definitely with any geographical area that I've ever lived in. Uh, most of them don't believe that, you know what I mean? So I think my energy is more suited for trying to get through to them, no matter the subject, whether the subject be on borders and or anything else. Now, I do think that there's a lot of energy being spent, but I will say, well, amongst the anarchist community talking about uh, borders, but I will say, Among I think a lot of it stems from people talking right past each other. And uh, I, I think I, that I believe that's true. Yeah. And I'm talking right past each other. So because they're talking right 
uh, past each other. I think a lot of a lot of um, and I think that's where most of the energy goes is that a lot of people are getting because they're talking past each other. You have misunderstandings, uh, miscommunication. I mean, definitely when you get on the Internet and stuff like that or with the nonverbal cues just not being <laughs> being right. there, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's huge. You know what I mean? Because you can absolutely misunderstand uh, people's people's uh, points. So I think that's what's more so happened. I think even often when I see people get into these arguments, they're well intended, I would like to think. But again, because they're talking past each other and there's a there's a slight misunderstanding as to what the you know, what's going on. I think that's more of where the energy is being wasted. But regardless, if that's being the case, what I've tried to get better as doing better at doing as a libertarian and as an anarchist is to sometimes stop myself when I get into those little petty arguments with people that already think like they're already an ANCAP. Like you've already been convinced. It's not my, I, 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 what am I wasting a lot of my scarce resource, my, the most scarce resource being my time trying to convince you to an end game that you've already came to when I'm going to go home and the people around me don't think anything like this. It, I would think my, if I'm going to leave my mark on this or if my time is best suited for those guys and trying to convince them to get on our side as opposed to us working out the, the small kinks that we might have in in, uh, in some type of dis disagreement in application or disagreement in, in how we get to this point. You know what I mean? So I think it's a lot of that happening to to a lot of different people, but definitely with me, I'm trying to get better at that and using it's, utilizing it's my efforts to us. I, it is, absolutely. It, it is difficult not, and, and I mean, I, 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 it happens to me. When you get emotional, and I do at times, definitely, and, and actually more so on Facebook, when mm. you get emotional, you're clouded, and then you start to look for what you want to be and not what is. And it happens to the best of us where, I mean, it's, it, I, you know, in a, in a, it, to a certain degree, it happened in a conversation that I had with you where, and actually, in, in, actually, this is kind of what led to this show, actually, it was that interaction where you posted a quote from Murray Rothbard. And actually, I wasn't misunderstanding you, by the way. I do want to clarify that. I was misunderstanding the Murray Rothbard quote. Mm -hmm. I read that quote very differently. And I did read it all. And I read it <sighs> thinking, dude, I'm, I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying. But, but there was an emotion immediately when I looked at your post, which I didn't identify right away. But that mm -hmm. emotion... It definitely it clouded the way I read that article, and I, and that article I ended up producing in my mind what I wanted that article to say, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, I believe that the 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 Murray Rothbard quote was essentially saying that uh, what what you're saying, which is uh, closed borders and open borders, is not a libertarian issue. Right. However, in a what what he uh, uh, proposed, which I don't necessarily agree with him, but I don't think his reasoning is 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 out of bounds. Or uh, I mean, it's it's a valid theory. Is in a libertarian community, you're probably going to have you're not going to have that that free travel that everybody thinks you're going to have. I think hmm. you're going to have you. You and I probably disagree on the, on the degree to which we believe free travel. I, but, but then again, maybe we don't. Maybe I shouldn't mm -hmm. assume, right? Mm -hmm. so, well, no, with me, with me, I mean, uh, as far as what the quote definitely that I posted was that he was saying that, you know, basically what I've been saying is that the fact that when we talk about borders, whether it be open or closed or, or slash restricted, neither one of those are libertarian positions. And, and the reason why he was saying what he was saying um, was that the immigration discussion, which is essentially what a lot of the open borders, quote unquote, discussion is about he says get resolved it gets resolved in a libertarian definitely an anarcho capitalist model as in that you know people can neatly to settle basically he what well, that's the term that he used he said it would be neatly neatly settled and you know as far as what i've been saying on free movement look i would never leave a conversation i think it's a bad bad position a bad argument definitely for anybody that calls himself an ancap to lead with that with that because that doesn't exist. I, and, I and noticed it, that you say a word. You say it all the yeah. time. And that is ANCAP. Why do you say yeah. ANCAP as opposed to anarchist? No, well, I say ANCAP because I don't want to be, I'm not a communist. You know what I mean? 
Is uh, it, I, I is play it, anarchist all the time, but my is, thing is, is it you know, ANCAP or is ANCOM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ANCAP and ANCOM are two different things. And uh, when I say, uh, I say, and I say anarchist, it's not like I'm afraid to say it. The reason why I always say, why I tend to say ANCAP is more so, so people know exactly where I'm coming from with what it is that I that I have. I don't want it to be any any kind of because again. With all these different, you know, hyphenations and all of that, it's this different kinds of people calling themselves anarchists. In a lot of cases, I don't believe in what they believe in to any extent, like uh, people that go around calling themselves anarcho-communists. So that's the only reason why I would ever use uh, ANCAP is because, again, it's a more to specify what it is that I that I adopt. But going back to to the situation about about Rothbard, he's saying that these that this would be in a privatized in a well, in an anarcho-capitalist model, and that's what he was going off of when he's saying basically everything is privatized. He's saying this does not exist. This yeah. is closed. I'm, I'm closed borders. Your post, by the way, your <laughs> yeah. privatized Mars or <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm saying privatized everything. I'm like, that's that's saying, as I say, if it don't, if it, if it moves and it don't move, I want it. I want it privatized. Yeah. But no, but on, but on a serious serious note, and I, and I love the way that he words it because he's saying, look, he said. Uh, this free kind of access to something, it doesn't exist. Um, if everything is privatized, basically he was talking about with, whether it be with movement or anything, usage of people's private property is still going to be left up to the uh, the property owner. You know what I mean? What we're having a conversation about now is, is the opposite of that. And that's, I think, a lot, where a lot of the, whether it be confusion or disagreements and stuff like that come from because the state right now essentially robs people to <laughs> to enforce whatever border policy that it that they you know what whatever border policy you can't privatize the land if I want to go on that go on that land and you know privatize uh it you know I'm going to run into some issues when it comes to the state so it does, and it doesn't matter what their policy is that that the fact that they enforce that is what makes them a nation state so what Rothbard was talking about, and this is the point that I've been trying to hammer home with people that are on both sides of this discussion, whether it be open borders or closed borders, is that privatization is neither one of those are libertarian positions, and privatization is it resolves this this conflict that we run into because everything you have you can either homestead it or you've achieved it uh, use of it via voluntary exchange, and your access to it is going to be dependent. Um, on that. So it might be somebody that may have a road or something like that. And me personally, I think that would be something that I would invest in um, immediately uh, in, in, a, in any kind of libertarian society. If you were a few months get, ahead of time and you knew, yeah, like I'd be dude, I'm buying in, me yeah, some roads. I'm, get, I'm getting some roads, man. Getting I'm getting some roads, roads because, right. because, because I know people need to travel. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm getting to those. So I'll get to those roads. But either way, as a road owner or something like that, whether it be a road or anything, land, whatever you want to call it, whoever gets to use that is still up to me. I can loosely regulate it. I could, I could heavily regulate it and say, you need to have this, this, and that. You know what I mean? Whatever it might be more cost effective to what it is that I'm trying to accomplish as a property owner with that road. But ultimately, regardless, as the, as the property owner, somebody's ability to use it, or not necessarily ability, more so right uh, to use it is still left up to me as a property owner and vice versa. If I'm trying to use somebody's, uh, utilize somebody else's land or utilize somebody else's road but, or anything but there, like that. There's another element in that. And this is, by mm -hmm. the way, one of the reasons that I don't think everything will be privatized. I don't think it's always going to be privatized versus public. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be privatized versus no one can really demonstrate a legitimate homesteading over this particular <laughs> plot of land. Uh, <laughs> In addition to your will to want to stop people from uh, traveling on your road, it's the practical uh, ability for you to enforce that will. <clears throat> and I believe there's going to be vast tracts of land, even if they're privatized, it's going to be really difficult. Yeah, people might be using it. Yeah, I mean, that happens now. I mean, again, I don't think there's going to be any kind of ideal ideal. Well, no, I don't want to say that there's not any kind of ideal standard because I think privatization is the ideal standard. Yes, there will be people that will. And I think in how that is privatized is going to determine how people uh, benefit off of it as a property owner, whether it be from, uh, again, if I realize that it's a road or something like that, 
Is that not an obstacle that I run into when I say, well, how can I tightly regulate this? Um, uh, you know, how it might cost you too use? much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. It might cost me too. Is right. this something that I really want to be spending my money on? So I think no matter what it is, whatever land it is that they they uh, say is, is theirs or, or uh, as a property owner, that's going to be dependent on what it is that they own, you know, how it is that they regulate it and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So that's what I, obviously what I advocate, but I think that's just how it works in terms of a privatized, uh, a libertarian society or what have you. You know what I mean? A lot of that is going to be dependent um, on what type of land or what type of property that property that they have privatized in terms of, you know, how are they going to allow other people access to it. You know what I mean? I think that's a big, that's yeah, a big right. thing. Devil with Rose, like you just said, uh, and the point that I was alluding to is that it might be, it might not be cost effective for me to have a road and just really, really tightly regulate who is on it. So let's go about other ways to make this feasible, not only for me, um, you know, but for everybody else. Yeah. You got to like offer you know? a product people will want to use. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And who wants to use a road that, um, and maybe there are people that would pay for, but you know, I, if, I would think it's, it's going to be very difficult. If it's in a primo difficult. spot, if it's in a primo yeah. spot for a limited space, you could probably regulate that puppy a lot, right? A yeah. lot easier. So, uh, in some of the interactions that we have, what, which I, I actually think you and I have been talking past each other, and maybe it's part you, maybe it's part me, maybe it's all me. I don't know, but I think that what I'm trying to understand is. And I think if I understand that I might learn something from it is obviously I would say, well, well let me ask you, do, do you, you think that some degree of anarchists, uh, and I understand for you, you're an outreach guy. You're primarily concerned with how do you reach beyond the, the echo chamber, which, Absolutely. which I get that. Now you're actually on one of my shows in which I'm actually focused on anarchists. Most of my shows actually are outreach shows. This one, though, is different. Right. But right. Uh, you obviously believe, I think that it, that, well, let me ask you, do you believe that there is a constructive reason why it is that anarchists should have a discussion about what's, what, what helps liberty more uh, if the government is enforcing an, a closed border policy or if the government is uh, uh, imp um, imposing an open border policy? Mm -hmm. And obviously, mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're advocating for it, but you're, this would be a very right. pragmatic argument, right? Right. It's right. kind of like... Well, I, I think there's a conversation, at least to be had, definitely when it, you know, not just... I mean, from an outreach standpoint, I absolutely think that, and I would actually encourage uh, anarchists to engage into this conversation, you know what I mean? Because no matter what side of the issue that you are on, there are people on it that aren't libertarians, whether it be more so of a restricted or closed border policy or from a just or right, leave them leave the joints wide open it's and, and i think it's important to be able to give a libertarian perspective on it definitely when you're out there talking to other other people so and, and i'm with you there there yeah I'm, you know what i mean I'm so i'm not so with you with the anarchists debating this although it could be i'm i'm interested well to hear. well the only reason i would see a, I guess an anarchist, and again, outreach is my number one thing. The only reason I would see an anarchist even engaging in this conver conversation is, again, to learn more about the position itself. Because a, a lot of these positions are very, very complex. And I think that definitely yeah, for those that study... Yeah, very complex. Yeah, it's, very it's, complex a, it's a complex... It's not a black and... I wish it was. I damn sure wish it was. But it's not necessarily a black, uh, a black and white issue. So... Engaging in these conversations, I think, helps other. If you're going into it with the intent to learn something, uh, definitely from the libertarian perspective, I might pick up something from a person that's, uh, you know, talking about borders in his community and maybe thought this through a lot more than I have. I have uh, that have, and it's, oh, it comes from both sides. So I can take that. And 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 go argue, not necessarily argue that, but bring that information that I've newly gathered for people that maybe study this or people that have dove into this and gave given perspectives that I might may, may not have considered, and take that going into a conversation with somebody that is again I'm trying to reach and bring them over to my side uh, from a libert like as a libertarian because they're not they're not they're their status, right. um, and I use that in a more more of a literal sense so. 
that to me, and it doesn't matter whether it be about the border situation or any other thing, I would, if, if you know, definitely if it's, cause that's a hot topic. It's a hot topic. I mean, well, you it's, saw, it's a, it's a form of political culture jamming, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely a hot topic. So I do dig the fact, and I've seen this. Don't get it twisted, though. I've seen a lot of people jumping down each other's throat. I think a lot of people have went into the conversation with absolutely no intentions of of uh, considering what the other person had to say. And I think that that type of communication, definitely if you're going to be able to take this to somebody else, I think there's a lot that you can take from that. And that's exactly what I do. If I'm going to waste my time, or it's not waste time, if I'm going to utilize my the most scarce resource I have to argue a position that we didn't generally on the ideal on the I, when it comes to an ideal setup, we already agree. The only thing that I can pick up is that, all right, because what happened is definitely on the border situation, um, hearing people discuss it, what it did for me was allowed me to, when I go to, now I can go discuss this issue and actually see where it is that they're coming from. Why do you fear, uh, fear this if it's, if, um, uh, if the, I guess the government takes a, a policy one way or the other, or one maybe in the middle, yeah. why do you fear that? Why is that bad to you? And seeing these other people have these conversations, they start mimicking maybe some of the, some of the positions that other people might fear. And this is the same thing with taxation and stuff like that. If I'm talking to a, uh, somebody that definitely those, um, <laughs> those conservative types who think that, well, oh, we got to have this. And don't like it, leave. But we gotta have this. Uh, well, don't go to this. Somalia. They're bombing that yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, we, we got <laughs> bad we move. Have to, we we have to have this. And if we didn't have it, the world would just uh, blow up. Whether it be some type of uh, police officers and stuff like that. You know why it is that they think like that? Is stuff. Uh, a lot of that conversation comes from me just you know having random conversations with people that are already on my side and I take that over okay I see what what it is that you're saying but let's consider this you know what I mean I know you fear this because of this but let's consider this I think communication is a is a key man C communication is is huge if we are going to win people on our side so I think that the border discussion can be one that is productive. I think often it, it is not. Do not get it twisted. I think we I've, both agree that a lot of that stuff is not. I, I, it, it, I have on my friends list, I have, I mean, I if if there's going to be a debate about what's better for liberty, I'm probably going to argue for open borders. Like, I'm going to say, in a pragmatic sense, I believe that liberty has the best chance in an open borders uh, mm -hmm. world. I, I But I can honestly say, I'm not 100% sure because mm -hmm. there are pitfalls with uh, open borders that and, and that, that and that was my position though Paul <laughs> like that what you just said that was exactly my position um years ago is that I would have leaned that way automatic but then again just doing more thorough research having this uh I've, I've kind of went in the other direction it, it's kind of it's kind of like well is the, the why is this a default like that that was <laughs> more so the question that I was asking I was like I, why the hell is this yeah, a default why right. is open for policy why is why is this exactly a default when you consider that even a lot of the the issues that that arise from a closed border policy like again the prevention of privatization you come across that same damn issue you do, uh, you do. If, if in an open border uh policy now, now when it comes to open versus closed i actually went in the opposite journey okay. that you did i started off closed borders Oh, okay. And then I moved over to, to the other side. However, when I say that I've moved over to the other side, I would never, and I don't think you would do this either, I would never stake my existential uh, being on a position that I'm right, that open borders is going oh, to give no, us no, the no, best no, opportunity, no, no. or yeah. closed borders for that matter. Absolutely. What, uh, I, I may have my own preferences as to why I, I favor open borders. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I will I will say one of the biggest reasons that I wanted you on this show was, uh, as you could probably figure out by now, is not to say, okay, what's better, open or closed borders for liberty? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's really what I see going on, what frustrates me and what you get from me sometimes and some of the interactions, why I get passionate is mm -hmm. because I see this debate destroying connections mm -hmm. and Fair friendships. Enough. I see fair people blocking each other all over yep. the place. I've blocked. Uh, fair enough. I've actually ended up blocking a couple of folks, but I 
been blocked way more than I've blocked. But uh, the the people that I, t I I am actually friends. I am with within you know in Facebook world. You know I'm friends mm -hmm. with with staunch closed border supporters, and I mm -hmm. can have conversations with them. Sometimes they get passionate, but right. but we're not calling each other commies and Nazis. Right. You Fair know, enough. we're Absolutely. not telling each other you're not a real anarchist if you yeah. don't believe this. It's like, I, so I what you're you. saying is you want to take a position that somebody's an anarchist or not an anarchist based on whether they think a state action will be beneficial yeah. to liberty or not. Because right. either action is a fundamental violation of liberty standards. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Either exactly. One. Exactly. Exactly. So, exactly. And that and I and that I will agree with you hundred percent, Paul. I've seen friendships breaking up. And and it, it's it's and this is where I think you have a big point when you if you lean towards a you know maybe this isn't the we shouldn't be putting the most time in this in amongst the anarchist community because what you see is a lot of people that have literally the same end game but because literally literally they're, they're, they have literally the same end game but because uh, our preference is different uh, considering the reality or, uh, it of could the political be a, climate it, now, they will destroy each other. Right, and there's a preference, and then there's, okay, you have a set of facts and figures. I have a set of facts and figures. Mm -hmm. Neither one of us is capable. I mean, I've never read, well, actually, I read most of human action a mm. long time ago when yeah. I wasn't an anarchist. I have that's one of the points to, that he was mentioning, but, right? But in, this in that is whole the book. You cannot calculate it all. Yeah, it's impossible. That's the problem with central planning, right? That's the right. problem. That's exactly that's the, the problem, problem with, uh, central. with central planning. So you're you know what I mean? It's right. Failure. But uh, and, and for me, I'll let you know a little bit about me. I and you've been on a couple. You've been on when I, when I did Dissociation Nation with Niz. Mm -hmm. You've been on that show a couple times. Uh, uh, I. I have two things that I love the most uh, to do in the anarchist community. One is actually like you, I love outreach. That's why my, my friend Andrew Merrick and I, we do a show called Lozilla. And Lozilla, we, we, we end up somehow talking about anarchy and liberty to some degree, but mostly what we talk about is we talk about celebrities. <laughs> we talk mm -hmm. about weird news, weird tech right. stuff, but you know, culture jamming you know you know right. let's let's talk beyond i love that part but the other part that i love and it has to do with my understanding of the reality of power and the necessity for having individuals to walk with you and right. to have i i'm i'm very big on the idea of i don't like the idea of unity i think unity is kind of scary collectivist weird everybody's got to <laughs> walk the same talk the yeah. same I'm not, yeah. i mean you and i were both christians i think you and right. i can be united in christ but not absolutely in, in anarchy we're, we right. but we what we can have are doors open or pathways doors whatever you want to call it to to possible opportunities for cooperation in the future mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. in the future and what i'm seeing is all of these pathways that for so many people that could possibly cooperate uh is is it's being shut off and right. it's being right. shut off over a debate that isn't a reflection of liberty however right. i want to say right. in the last couple of days i did have a thought uh, since i've been talking to you and a few others that mm -hmm. uh, in in and when i what i reflect is this is just my preference this is just my opinion I am not. I, I made a joke a long time ago. I was making fun of people who who kind of declare anarchy this, and I am Pope Paul yeah. the anarchist the seventeenth. There is no pope, but yeah. you know, I am not the pope of anarchy. So yeah. don't get upset if I say something that you disagree with. Although you can, I don't care. But sure. uh, I'm. I think that there is something that is constructive that will bridge gaps beyond the ANCAP world, that will actually reach out to, I, I won't say ANCOMs, uh, but I'll say some more left-leaning anarchist, mm -hmm. uh, what, what you would call left-leaning. I don't really like thinking in terms of, of left and right. Mm -hmm. but And that is, the, 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 what I've been thinking about, the, the, the property that's owned by government, what the heck happens to it? What happens to it? That, I mean, is, uh, that is a legitimate question for <sighs> anarchists to talk about. I mean, yep. I don't know. I don't think that we're going to be able to 100% certain say what's going to happen. I think yeah. the spontaneous uh, order may surprise us. <laughs> I think it will surprise us, man. I mean, it's, yeah. I, and I will say there are some people that are having that 
discussion. And I think that's probably the, the more, maybe a more productive discussion to have that, if, if we're going to be discussing. Yeah. Um, and, and I have seen people bring it up. It's like, who who gets who would get first dibs? If not, if not the people, you know, would it be the people that live there? Would it be the people that, you know, is there some way to prove that, you know, you were, I don't know how they would prove that. I mean, maybe in a li from a libertarian legal theory standpoint, I guess the first people that would technically have dibs are the people that I guess are owed the rest the restitution, which would be the the taxpayer. You know what I mean? But how do you prove how much you put how much you put you well, know, went, I, to, went I like, to that? You know, it's tough. I like what Luffy posted recently. He was talking about well, you know, it's, and he's being facetious here. He says, "Well, all we have to do is well, we have to we have to get the the government uh, agents." Uh, to go through their records and track exactly who paid what, and uh, and and help us. If they could do and, that, they I mean, won't. They won't. I mean, they I won't mean, dissolve that, themselves. Yeah, I mean, they're again, gonna if they burn could do the that, records. That would be on, awesome. Yeah, but that'd be gonna, awesome. But I can't do that. They're gonna burn the records on the way. Yeah, out the that's door. gonna be yeah. tough. I mean, yeah, they'd be, they'd be, all, they'd be, you know, handing it, hand, handing us the solution right there on a silver platter. Yeah, uh, it's, it's probably not gonna they, happen. They, but I mean, it, but, it, but, it state is, but it is an interesting question. What happens yeah. to yeah, it is. All it's it's, it's a tough one, and that's a, that's a productive, that's a productive conversation, I guess, to be had because that's a difficult one. Again, I, I mean, again, from a libertarian, I guess, from the le legal theory sense, you would think that again, the the person that well, that would that would literally be the case. The person that uh, if you can prove that this person was taxed and their tax money went to went to this then i guess they would have dibs on it first and they might say i don't want anything to do with it and then maybe leave it to homestead or whatever i don't know but it's it, I, I like you mentioned i don't think it would be handed to us on a silver platter like that but that's actual a great question to be had and i've seen some people sort of bring that up but not really diving into it because uh we really can't get past uh we can't get past open or closed yeah, we can't get past that. You know what and I mean? We can't so, get past Nazis and commies. Yeah, we, 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 can't, we can't. Yeah, and we can't get past, uh, you know, again, destroying entire uh, friendships. I mean, well, it, even if you don't consider it a friendship, I mean, people that were at least connections. Cordial, connections. You know, connections and people that were. Opportunities that were actually, for cooperation are being right. cut off. And it's not right. like there's a whole lot of us to start off with. Right. And uh, you know our our exchange of information and resources is, I think, our greatest asset. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and in, I think uh, you and I uh, I've talked before, you 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 had said that I've seen you say you talk about division. Division isn't necessarily bad. I agree. Mm -hmm. Division mm -hmm. is not necessarily bad. Uh, I mean, the United States government tried to desegregate the population. In an incredibly artificial way, it mm -hmm. was like no division. And it didn't work out. <laughs> it, it, right. It, it just doesn't work out. So division no. isn't necessarily a bad thing. But mm -hmm. and and I'll say within my framework of perspective that we started off with, I mm -hmm. have a vested interest in seeing as many people as possible who who have that fundamental. They agree they want humans to live. They agree they want humans to prosper. They agree they want humans to have the the the, the greatest opportunity to make the the greatest uh, free will choices that they possibly can with the least bit of physical uh, uh, coercion as possible. If if you mm -hmm. believe in those things, there I I I mean I think you and I maybe sometime you can come on another show uh, maybe right. with me and Bodie and we can talk about property because I mm -hmm. think you and I we might have some differences. Uh, my, my difference with you actually would be an uncertainty where you have certainty. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but I think that we can have that, that difference, uh, mm -hmm. as, so long as I'm not offering coercion, uh, in response, I'm, I'm not, I'm not seeking to coercively force you into my understanding. I, I mean, I, I believe that property is very, very the prop. I don't believe in property rights. I believe in property standards. And, mm -hmm. and the key difference is that uh, I don't believe that there's an absolute justification for property, but there is an absolute justification for property for me within my framework of, of preference, within a framework of preference of wanting the most amount of people to have the greatest opportunity to make their own choices. I believe property standards is where it's at. Uh, and, and that's a, and the, and we might not be fully aligned, but I believe, mm -hmm. I, I think, I 
I don't want to speak for you, but I think that we're aligned enough that if you, you and I, like, I think when I have a conversation with you on Facebook, I think by and large we've been, you know, even when we disagree, we know. Nobody, yeah, nobody, pretty good. Pretty nobody's good. throwing bombs at anybody. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100% uh, so, right. So we're keeping open opportunities for cooperation. We might mm-hmm. never ever, I might never ever talk to you again. We might never have another opportunity for cooperation. It might not happen. But hey, the door's open. Right. Because we it's didn't not shut anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I mean, so so for me, that is if you're listening, whoever's watching us right now, if you're 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 thinking about them, let me ask you this. What do you what what is your advice? How can we have a better conversation in which we're we're not uh nuke some relationships need to be nuked. Let's be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but but where we're not nuking relationships that really the only reason they were nuked is because one or two of you uh, uh, were consumed by your own passion. How, how, mm-hmm. how, how do we avoid that? Right. Right. That's a, that's, that's a great question. I mean, it's a great question and it's one that needs to be had um, because there are some people that have, and, and that to me of all is weird Because I see, at least I don't approach it like that. I never will approach it like that to where I will, just because we disagree on a preference. If even like we can uh, say, if there's a hundred, a hundred things that we agree with, but there's, (laughs) I mean, ten, one, you know, what what, if it's ten, ten, ten. whatever number of things that we might have a different preference. Even in the end game, we actually agree. So you can say it's a hundred percent that we agree. But just because in a preference, uh, because I think what we're really discussing is the political climate is as it is today. You know what I mean? And because the state exists. All right. What gets us? What is going to get us to liberty? Right. And that's when the preferences say, all right, well, I would prefer this. I would prefer that. And people start saying, oh, well, well, even if, again, the end game is literally the same. But, but I think we're not talking just about preference there in that context. I think we're also talking about. Hey, I actually believe this will work better. Well, no, I, I believe I, 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 for instance, I don't believe there's any reason whatsoever to participate in any kind of political uh, outside of outreach to uh, uh, non-anarchists. I don't believe necessarily that engaging in in uh, uh, in political action is is mm-hmm. really all that helpful. I'm mm-hmm. not going to nuke someone and say they're not an anarchist. Or whatever, if they say, you know, I think uh, I think it'll work. I'm like, okay, well, you go ahead and try yeah. that. Go, right. good luck. Yeah, and, and that, that's that's another one that I've seen people when the election cycle. Like, it was another. I saw people nuking conversation, nuking entire friendships because one person said, you know what, look, I, I think if you know whether it be with the Libertarian Party or the Republican uh, Liberty Liberty Caucus, I know some anarchists that are actually with literally in in the Republican uh, Liberty Caucus. And uh, they say, you know, look, this is this is my way, and they they usually have some sort of proof that says, look, I, I helped this person come to liberty by being a member. I mean, me personally, I don't participate in, you know, I don't participate in, I did, I haven't participated in politics for for a little bit now, and that's just not what I do. But I'm not going. Definitely, if they have provable strides that have been made, I think maybe their 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 efforts are best utilized elsewhere. But I'm not going to say that this person is not a a, a libertarian or not an anarchist or yeah. something like that, simply because they think that uh, even though the end game is the same, they think there's a stride to be made there. We can disagree. We can say that you know that we can talk about what's more effective, which uh, position is going to be going to get us to liberty uh, first, I guess. Uh, but sitting here nuking an entire conversations yeah, that's, and friendships that's yeah. just insane just because we disagree on that one aspect i think that's insane yeah and that's i mean i'm i'm actually i'm a connector by nature i like connecting people and uh, so that mm-hmm. maybe that helps you understand a little bit why for me <clears throat> this is a passionate issue but it's not right. because i'm i am not doggedly defending open borders right. i'm doggedly defending connections mm-hmm. i i have a I have connections with people, maybe a couple people that you wouldn't even want to be connected with. Uh, I have connections with people in the anarchist community uh, across the hyphenated sphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my my one test with them is this. And this is, 
if if you fail this test, I am not going to walk with you in anarchy. And mm -hmm. that is, do you advocate for violence to achieve your goal? If you advocate for violence to achieve your goal, you and I, we, I mean, I can stay connected to you to a certain extent, but if, when it, my connection to you is about trying to witness true liberty to you. Mm -hmm. It's not about walking with you in anarchy. That's, that's my right. one test. And right. I, like, I, I, I have a belief that for me, fundamentally, if, I, I believe that the free market is absolutely the best uh, opportunity for individuals to be able to make that free uh, uh, choice to have the, 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 the most options without coercive uh, uh, involvement. I believe individual property is, is, is the path. But I'm not 100% sure that in spontaneous order as it emerges that you're not going to see something that will surprise you, that you haven't even thought about. Mm -hmm. And... If you want to go ahead and try something that I'll look at and I'll be like, dude, it's not going to work. I, I say, go ahead and try it, man. The marketplace mm -hmm. of ideas, go ahead. As long as you're not taking course of action, go ahead and try it. I'm going to tell you, you're going to freaking implode. <laughs> if, if you want to try to build a collectivist ownership, I believe yeah. personally that that is the road to nowhere. But I'm mm -hmm. not going to disconnect from you if you want to do mm -hmm. that unless – you advocate for and i have to say the folks that call themselves ancom i i won't say all of them but a fair amount of them they eventually if you talk to them long enough for, at least in my experience i have discovered violence comes into play as far as <laughs> an advocation for Shit, man that's usually an automatic with me so you giving them you giving them uh, i guess your conversations and went maybe a little a little different in mine. So usually for me, it's automatic. Like <laughs> every conversation I've had, that's why I've got to the point to where I, 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 I say, man, I ain't even wasting my time with the, like that. There's a there's a select group of people that I would just say, look, I have no desire to even attempt because I already know where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Like on some violent shit. Excuse my language, but I now, I'm violence, not going. To, violence is not. Something you know like what I mean? Like I ain't going. I'm not going there with you. You have, you have. Uh, I'm not even about to attempt to reason with that. You know what I mean? Um, and usually it comes from that bunch, you know, of people. Very. I don't think I've ever. I mean, sell, uh, sell them. You know what I mean? Uh, I, there might be one, and I, I just want to leave it. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, you know what I mean? I'm just going to leave it open because I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. But, uh, you know, at least from my knowledge, as far as my recent memory, man, there's no conversation with any sort of communist has, has been good. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, generally speaking, uh, folks that come from the ANCOM perspective, I've actually had more more success talking to folks that maybe people would consider in that camp. Although I don't know necessarily that they call themselves ancoms, but 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 people mm -hmm. would call them ancoms. But I've had good constructive conversations with folks, which is by the way why, in and of itself, the conversation about open or closed borders, I'm I'm not I'm I'm actually for having all conversations. Uh, mm -hmm. I when I see conversations that from my perspective, don't look like they're bearing fruit. I'm not as interested in that. But yeah, uh, but, sure. but I like asking, you know, Tom Woods, you're going to be on the Tom Woods show, yeah. dude. You're going to be on the thousandth episode. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And, and That's going to be fun, man. I'm, I'm really excited. I, I've, I'll look forward to listening to that. That's awesome. And what's yeah. he talk about? The, the You know, going off the, what is the exact phrase? Going off the three by far, five card of allowable opinion. Anarchists yeah. anarchist have allowable opinion. You're right. And you're they right. have their own three by five right. card. I like going off the three by five card. I like, like sometimes uh, if I don't know how much you read my Facebook page, but I put stuff out there. I like, do right. I believe this? I don't know. I throw it out there. Let's see. Let's see what I learn. So, right. so, so, so something that goes outside of the parameters of what most anarchists would, uh, <laughs> what right. most anarchists would, would accept as uh, you know, like even like, I, and and really, I I'd love to have you back on. I'm not going to get a commitment from you, but after mm -hmm. uh, after Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, maybe in a few weeks, I would okay. love to have you on another show that I do with Tyagananda uh, Swaraj. You see him there commenting, and Andrew Barich, 
and I would love to talk about property. Okay. And the nature cool. of property and some of the philosophical ramifications of property. I think I'd be, yeah. I'd be a fascinating conversation, you know? For sure. I mean, yeah. I, I take a very pragmatic approach when it comes to property, but uh, I find it extremely useful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always up for having these conversations, man. So just so, let me know if I'm free with it, man. Just hit me up. Yeah, I, I will. I, uh, I, I think that we've reached the end. I think personally that uh, I'm hoping that we've, what I wanted out of this conversation in the beginning was uh, for anybody that might be listening now or videos in the future, as if maybe our conversation that you and I have, you, you and I, we're not completely enmeshed with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not. Uh, and that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. You and I can still be friends and we still have uh, uh, opportunities for cooperation because neither one of us has nuked one another and validated right. the other, declared the other an anarchist or a non-anarchist, a Nazi or a commie <laughs> or a statist. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know, <laughs> you know, we, 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 we don't necessarily agree. I, I, I think I'm right about open borders and uh, about being, I'll say, open borders, providing more opportunity for liberty to grow than, than closed borders. But I'm open. I'm open mm -hmm. to that discussion. And you mm -hmm. know, I'm, I'm. By the way, if anybody ever wants to come on the show and, and actually have that discussion, I'm open to that as well. Right. Uh, but but I I don't think that you and I uh, disagree on the fundamentals. No, no, and that's that's. We're we're arguing I think over it's, whether I, it's hey, should, is it better to get kicked in the nuts or punched in the throat? Yeah. I don't know, man. Like that. Yeah. Kick in the yeah, nuts yeah, is gonna we, help. We us. both agree. We both agree on the end game, and I think yeah. um, that is. To me, when I'm having these discussions, is the I guess that's what I lead with. You know what I mean? It's going to be telling. It's going to be telling of the relationship, the type of relationship that uh, one is going to have with another individual. And I try to approach everybody as um, an individual as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if we can agree on the basics, then I, uh, it's awesome. You know, let's start there. And I try to keep that in mind, even in, through our disagreements. Try to keep that that in mind, um, no matter who it is. Yeah, that way, but it's but it's difficult because sometimes yeah, it is. I mean, sometimes human. when somebody is telling you, uh, I mean, I've done this. I'm not, you know, we've all done this. Where yeah, you know, we, me some, too, me too. It, We're all uh, nobody's above this logic. Right. If somebody's you know, telling you something like you're stupid, you're an idiot, yeah. you're told you you don't have your information right. All of a sudden, it's not just about trying to understand something. It's like, whoa, this is an existential threat. Your opinion <laughs> about my worthlessness is now suddenly what I'm going to fight about. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's what the fight becomes about instead mm -hmm. of something which I, I mean, I, I absolutely think going forward, I would love to see more conversations about what does happen to the government land. Mm -hmm. uh, I think yeah. that's a conversation. Yeah. I'm it's really good, Great conversation. Yeah. Great conversation. I mean, uh, I mean, it might be a lot more productive than um, some of the nonsense that I see going on now, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. It, yeah. So, and it sucks. It is nonsense. I'm not, I think we both can agree. Yeah. Uh, unless somebody's, on, on a, unless somebody is a card carrying communist or a card carrying Nazi, I'm for one will, well, I guess the best that I'll say is I think you're kind of going down the commie road or I <laughs> think you're kind of going down the Nazi road, but I'm yeah. not going to call you that. I'm just yeah, I'm not going to call you that, man. Just saying, be careful, you know, man. You're on the bus. <laughs> You're yeah, on the yeah. bus to Berlin <laughs> or the bus to Moscow, dude. Get off the freaking bus. <laughs> yeah, for so, sure, man. I'm with you, man. I'm so, with you on that. <laughs> so, so before I leave here, where, where, what, what, what do you have going on in the near future with being Liberty and Army? Uh, well, right now we're bi we're about to launch a new website. We have being um, we have the original webs website, but you'll be able to get it by uh whether it be being com as well as uh oh, being cool. libertarian tv and which we're going to launch and you will be able to see we obviously have our podcasts and stuff like that but you're going to see a lot of more videos and maybe people that are following us right now um we've been having a lot of videos uh come out a lot of more contributors and stuff like that starting to get a little more professionalized and stuff so that's really been my focal point for the last uh since we got off our last tour um 
some months ago. That's been my focal point in trying to, because I am the head of multimedia for this uh, for this you entire. You are the head brand. of multimedia. You know what I mean? So it's my responsibility. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's my responsibility. So make sure that I get that done is uh, was has been top priority because we go on tour again in a couple of months. I believe in August. So I have to make sure that you know this gets off the ground so it's smooth sailing. Um, at some point. So we'll be launching that and obviously the band itself, which uh, seems like a lot of more people care about that than than my actual commentary. Uh, I, I actually <laughs> care more about the commentary, although I like yeah. the band. I, I bought yeah. the CD, yeah. but right. I actually right. care more yeah. about the commentary. It seems, no. That seems like, you know, people, a lot more people talk about that. Well, you that know makes that, sense. So, which is fine. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not, not saying they're, they're in the wrong uh, for doing that, but yeah, we do the band Vanna for those that listen to hardcore music, they are wrapping it up. They're doing a farewell tour, and we'll be on that. Uh, and it starts in Toronto, and we'll be working our way on down. I can't remember the exact date that it starts in August, uh, but you can obviously go to backwardsmusic.com or go to our Facebook page and get all of those dates that we'll be at. And uh, hope to see how we. The last tour, we saw a lot of familiar faces. Um, in the Liberty Movement that came to support us and uh, came obviously to see if it was a great ticket uh, in itself, but came to see the other bands as well. So hope to see some more people uh, this upcoming tour in August. And of course, we'll have some more announcements with music videos and also more tours going on in the fall and the winter. What, what's the name of the video? Um, I'm embarrassed. What's the name of the video that you shot where the dude is with the megaphone? Uh, self ownership. Oh, it is self ownership. I thought it's self ownership. Yeah. Like, no, it's not self ownership. Don't sound like an idiot. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, no, but I was right. So, so I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a strange fellow. I'll admit it. I keep uh, a top 100 ranking of my favorite mm -hmm. top 100 songs because of the OCD. It's you got to do it. And you, you guys are rising in the charts. You're at number I love 20. It. You're at number 23 right now on Paul Gordon's top 100. I love Congratulations. it. Congratulations. And you're heading up. You're heading up. Appreciate <laughs> that, man. No, that's what it's about, man. I'm actually, uh, uh, that's awesome, man. So, <laughs> man, and, and with you guys, man, uh, within our community, it's been a lot of people that have supported us. I've said time and time again that this uh, libertarian anarchist community has, is the backbone of, of backwards. I mean, it's a lot of most of our supporters that have launched us into um, a lot of opportunities that I would have I would never have had you know what I mean we got a lot of opportunities to perform like again with these last tours that we've been hopping on to really get this message out to people that have n <laughs> never even heard of this this these concepts that I've been talking about and for me yeah, to get on you're, it's, it, it's 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 really effective culture jamming I love it yeah. now uh, I'm all about I, I do want to thank you for helping me with my daughter and you knew nothing about it but you know, ripples. Uh, I'm watching. I'm watching my top 100 video countdown because once okay. I make the list, I get to watch the list. I yeah. I, I spend all day. I, I work usually, and I play my list. It's awesome. And and your video came on, and my daughter's kind of jamming to it. She's enjoying it. I was like, yeah, you know, you see those guys? Because I know you, and I know Alex. I said, yeah, I know those guys. Uh, right. you know, so I name dropped you with my daughter. <laughs> my daughter, hey. she walked away. She what was a I'll little see. bit huffy. She walked away a little <laughs> bit huffy. And I'm like, dude, why'd you walk away? She says, you're cooler than me. <laughs> so, so you helped me. You, you gave me cool points oh, with my dude, daughter, that, dude. That's, that's so, awesome. so I thank you for that. So I want to thank you very much for being on iState here. iState advocating for a state of I. That's a small I. And uh, I, uh, if you want to find, uh, I will post this show. It's on, obviously, the archive will be on the Liberty Principle. It's also on our Facebook page, which is Facebook, our, our YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash C slash I state. If you haven't subscribed, you should. And if you want to find everything, including this show, this show, once I post it on YouTube, it'll magically appear on this page shortly after. And that is istv.me. Dude, is that easy to remember? Yeah, really is TV easy. taught me. <laughs> I mean, really easy. That's really easy to remember. So I want to thank you very much, uh, Eric July of Being Libertarian and Backwards. And I'm Paul Gordon of iState. And I'll see you on the next unscheduled episode of iState. Oh, and real quick, Wednesday, I'm actually going to be doing two shows on this, on this Facebook page. The first show is going to be with uh, Donnie, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I forgive me. Donnie Jaber, 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 uh, who is, uh, he does uh, U2030, and he's going to be talking about automating Congress. 
using the blockchain to create 300 million legislatures, direct republic, if you will. So I think that's going to be fascinating. And then uh, late, that'll be about five, uh, five o'clock, five ish. And then about 9 30 or so, I'll be joined by Professor Rambo on full auto. And we're going to be talking guns in Europe and what should you be doing in the current climate. And mm. that's it. I thank you all for joining us. Uh, be blessed and uh, don't uh, stop calling each other commies and Nazis and talk to each other. <laughs>